We're gathered here today in the sight of God and these witnesses to unite these two. Scott Brown, the Breaker, Amanda Marie Klanowski, and the Bonds of Holy Matrimony. There's something of a great picture that's going to happen today. I believe that God created marriage. He created it in some way to reflect His image in a way that nothing else does. Marriage runs like a theme throughout the whole Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, the Gospels record that Jesus performed His first miracle at a wedding. If you were to look back at all God created in those six days of creation, after everything, after each thing He created, He said, this is good. It was one thing He said it was not good, though. He said, it's not good for man to go alone. So God decided to remedy that, and He decided to give Adam what He called a help, a companion. Someone who saw that loneliness would fill that need, and He created Eve. When Adam saw Eve, he cried out and he said, This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. Friends, since God is the author of marriage, it seems that we should ask his blessing on our time together today. Would you please pray with me? Right. Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege to gather here this day. I'm so thankful that you designed marriage as part of your plan. And thank you for the gift of love you've given to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for Scott. Thank you for Mandy. Thanks for the love for each other. We commit this time to you today. Amen. Scott and Mandy, you are about to enter into the closest and most tender relationship that human beings can have. It's founded on mutual respect. It's founded on affection. It's founded on sacrifice and loyalty. I'm going to warn you, you're going to make some pretty outrageous promises today. <laughs> You need to understand the knowledge that a union embodying such ideals is not to be entered into lightly, or advisedly, but soberly, reverently, discreetly, and in the fear of God. It's into such a union you now come. I'm going to ask you a statement of intent. I'm going to ask you to listen closely, but this is what you intend to do when you respond, I do. Scott, would you take Mandy to be your wedded wife? Through the solemn promise before God and these witnesses that you will love, honor, and comfort her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others for her alone, you will perform unto her all the duties of her husband owes his wife, until God by death shall separate you. I do. Mandy, do you take Scott to be your wedded husband? Do you solemnly promise before God and these witnesses that you will love, honor, comfort him in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, for him alone, you will perform unto him all the duties a wife owes her husband, until God by death shall separate you. Okay. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. They say they will love, comfort, honor each other to the end of their days. They say they will cherish each other and be faithful to each other always. They say they will do these things not just when they feel like it, but even for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, when they don't feel like it at all. In other words, the vows they, the, the vows they make can hardly be more extravagant. They give away their freedom. They take on themselves each other's burdens. They bind their lives together. The question is, what do they get in return? They get each other in return. There will always be another to talk to, to listen to. There is still someone to get through the night with, to wake into a new day beside. If they have children, we can give them, as well as each other, fruits and wings. If they don't have children, they each become the other's child. They both still have their lives apart, as well as their lives together. They both still have their separate ways to find. But a marriage made in heaven is one where a man and a woman more richly themselves together, and the chances are either of them can ever again become one. I want to take just a minute and talk to the both of you. I told you earlier that God is the author of marriage, and in His Word, the Bible gives us some instructions on how we can have a good one. And I want you guys to listen to the words that are found there. You know, over the next several hours, weeks, months, years ahead. 
You wrestle with these. Put them into practice. For those of you that are married today, perhaps this is a reminder for all of us. But Scott, I'm going to start with you because I believe the Bible starts with you. This is what it says in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. It says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for it. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loves his wife loves himself, for no man yet hates his own flesh, but he nourishes and cherishes it, even as the Lord of the church the members of his body. Scott, that's the charge to you. It's a simple charge, a deep charge. The Bible wants us to love the way Christ loves us, the way Christ loved you. His love wasn't based on you, wasn't based on anything we've done. It was based on Him. The Bible tells us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Your love for Mandy is to be based in your character, not on anything she does. doesn't matter how she acts. doesn't matter what she does from this moment on. You're pledging today that you will love her out of your heart. A covenant love, and that's a tough thing. The Bible also talks to husband Scott about nourishing and cherishing their wives. I'll warn you that your happiness is wrapped up in her happiness. If she's happy, you have a chance to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> if she's not happy, you're not going to be happy. <laughs> your goal, Scott, is to create an environment where you nourish and cherish Mandy so that she can grow into the woman that God wants her to be. And as you do that, as you create that environment where she's safe, safe in your love and your protection, so that she can grow. That's, that's the challenge for you. It's a wonderful thing, Scott, when God brings two people together. Marriage can be the greatest thing, it can be the worst thing. Responsibility falls on the husband. Believe the Bible puts it on the husband, and this dad put it on you to love Mandy the way God loves you. Mandy, the Bible also says something to wives. It says this, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, the Savior of the body. Therefore, so as the church is subject unto Christ, let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Mandy, I'll tell you, if I were to write writing the Bible, I would have said, husbands love your wives, wives love your husbands. That seems to make sense. That's not what it says. It calls you to submit. That's a hard word today. Let me, give you, let me take a few minutes to tell you what I think it means. The Bible calls you to submit, to lay down your rights, not because you're powerless, but if Scott is successful and really loving you the way God loved us, then you don't have so much power. Your part is then to lay that power back down, and in so do, doing, you give him tremendous respect. You build him up, you become more lovely, and the marriage Bible is not working. Maybe I want you to be Scott's greatest fan. He doesn't need another critic. He needs somebody there to support him. You make his home. So wherever you are, he's at home. There's something about where you are that you will feel at home. If you lay your power back down for Scott and you make your home a place where he longs to leave uh, and loves to be, then that will be your part. For both of you, offer just a quick comment. Marriages spiral up or they spiral down. When they spiral up, it's magnificent. It's one of the greatest beauties I think the world can see. A marriage where the husband loves the way Christ loved the church. The wife submits to her husband in respect. She becomes more lovely and it spirals up. A marriage spiraling down is one of the most horrible things to see. It's like watching hell come into a home. It's an awful thing, and it spirals down the same way it spirals up. Your marriage will spiral down at some point. All marriages do. It might be a day, it might be a week. But when it does, Scott, the responsibility to stop that spiral is yours. That's what it means to be a husband. At any cost, whatever you have to do to stop the downward spiral, you love man. You love her in a way so she cannot help but begin to submit and love back. That's the challenge for you both this day. I want you to turn and face each other, hold, hold each other's hands. We exchange your vows. I want you to repeat after me. I, Scott, take me, Mandy. I, Scott, take me, Mandy. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For richer, for poor. For richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. To God by them. To God by them. Shall separate us. Shall separate us. And you can repeat after me. I may you take these scouts. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. From 
this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till God by death shall separate us. What token do you bring to faithfully perform these vows? These rings are a symbol, just as they have no end. May this union have no end. These rings are made of the finest gold that's purified by fire. May this marriage be pure and endure. Scott, if you will take that ring, place it on the fourth finger of Mandy's left hand, and repeat after me. With this ring, with this ring, I seal my pledge. I seal my pledge. Of, of love and devotion. <coughs> In the name of the Father, in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Man, if you will take this ring and place it on the fourth finger of Scott's left hand and repeat after me. With this ring, With this ring I, seal my pledge, I seal my pledge of love and devotion. Of love and devotion. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> would you please pray with me?